Hi folks, my name is Ming Yao and I'm with Singularity Engineering. Today I want to talk about calculating heat transfer coefficients. With uh, many flow models, it's useful to have a heat transfer coefficient to model the flow of air over an object. But obviously this value changes depending on the, the speed of the air as well as the geometry. And sometimes I want to do a quick model on a conduction-based analysis. Uh, but I want to get a good estimate for heat transfer coefficient. So today we'll go through a quick exercise to figure out how to do that. In fact, we'll uh, explore all types of uh, uh, thin heat sinks. So here I have a little segment of a model. You can imagine both of these two surfaces are symmetric plane, symmetry planes. So in fact, we have many repeating sections of, heat, of uh, thin heat sink. Um, and we're going to parameterize this model. So I'm gonna, going to specify a pull operation on this and specify the distance to the other side. So my air gap, maybe a half of my air gap, is 4 millimeters. So I'll change this to air gap. Oops. Uh, and that's all I need to do for to create a parameter. Now I'm going to do the analysis and ANSYS AIM. ANSYS AIM is a easy to use multi-physics simulation environment. Here we're only going to use the CFD side of it, but it has a, a wide range of features. For example, we can do structural, thermal, electromagnetics, topology optimization, FSI, even polymer extrusion and blow molding. So let's look at uh, the CFD side. We're going to use the existing geometry. This will be a steady state simulation and the flow area will be made of air. We want to include heat transfer. So you can see that this is a workflow, a guided workflow setup in that AIM asks us a few questions, we fill it out, and it sets all of the relevant details. One of the things I like to do is define the mesh manually. This gives us some extra control in terms of meshing. Specifically, for thin gaps, we want to make sure there are enough elements through the thickness. So here, it's going to put four, uh, three elements across any gap, which is pretty good for basic heat transfer analysis. The boundary layer, we can define it explicitly. So here, we, I want to select these surfaces as the boundary layers. So we swap it out. The rest won't have any boundary layers defined. Actually, maybe we'll add the top as well. So now there are eight faces with boundary layers. With that done, we can go ahead and start setting up the analysis. Um, if you don't know what to do, you can go through this list here. But since I know what I'm doing, I'll just set up Symmetry boundaries on either side. This approximate infi infinite boundaries on either side of it. Uh, we have an inlet here. And I'll give it a, a one meter per second magnitude. And we'll say it's 20 degrees Celsius coming in. Uh, let's make this uh, flow velocity a parameter because I do want to explore different flow velocities and see how that affects my heat transfer coefficient. We can also add in an outlet over here, and that's just going to have zero gauge pressure. Uh, the bottom here, this will be my heat sink. So this will be a special wall. I'll call this wall my heat sink and specify a temperature. So I'm going to specify a 50 degrees Celsius temperature on this wall, and that will be a parameter as well. Uh, finally, if I go back to my uh, geometry import here, let's, uh, let's import the geometry again, but this time I want to bring in all of the parameters. This dimension key here uh, removes some of the parameters. So here now I have the air gap as a parameter. I want to make this parametric as well. So let's go ahead and run my simulation. All right, so it's finished. We can take a look at the results. So these are the standard CFD results you expect to see. We have this uh, ex result ex exploration option, but I typically want to take a look at uh, a contour on the symmetry plane. We can look at the pressure. 
Okay, so that's our pressure. You can see that we do resolve the, the boundary layers nicely. Uh, let's take a look at the temperature. And this is what you expect, a little hot region and then the rest of the heat getting blown away here. And, and we can also do some quantitative post-processing. So I'm going to look for a calculated value, user-defined functions, and I can just put in an expression to calculate the average. I'm going to do a, um, do a surface heat flux across the, the heat sink, calculate the average of that, divided by the temperature, average temperature across the heat sink minus the inlet temperature of 20 C, and do an evaluation. And this tells me that the the heat transfer coefficient is around 20 uh, watts per meter squared degree Celsius. So that's pretty straightforward. This is all fully parameterized now. Let's go ahead and do a parametric study. Because I want to know not just that one meter per second flow rate, but how does uh, my heat transfer coefficient vary as I go from, say, one to 10 meter per second? And also, what happens if my heat sink goes from 55 to 80 degrees Celsius and my gap shrinks down to one millimeter um, or five millimeters? So I want to explore all of these differences and now I can look at a preview. So now I can go ahead and run through the simulation. I realized that in my original analysis, I didn't specify how many uh, process to use. So I'm going to use four processors to run these simulations. And that's going to result in a faster result, faster simulation. Okay, so let's go ahead and update my parametric analysis. Okay, the simulation has completed, and it looks like this one design point didn't get a result. If we go to the parameter set over here, we can see that it did create a result, but it wasn't fully converged. ANSYS doesn't set this as a converged solution, so it's telling us we need to take a look at it. With, um, with fluid dynamics analysis, sometimes the simulation doesn't converge. The heat transfer coefficient, though, usually stabilizes after a few settings, a few, you know, 100 iterations or so. So we can trust or assume that this is near the correct value, and we can overwrite the, the result here. So I'm going to set the result to custom here, and I'll set this to such that uh, we can edit this output. And that will allow us then to proceed with our analysis. Okay, so we're going to assume that the, the simulation previously is accurate, and we're going to generate some response services based on the results from the previous analysis. Response services uses a genetic algorithm to figure out how all of our parameters are influenced by other parameters. We can, for example, take a look at a 3D chart of um, you know, inlet velocity and, say, the size of the gap and uh, the heat transfer coefficient. It lets us look at things like sensitivity curves and local sensitivity of the data. We can also do an optimization. So this gives us some more quantitative results. Uh, we want maybe uh, high heat transfer coefficient and um, let's, let's say minimize the inlet velocity. So some trade-offs here. There are a few different algorithms available for optimization. I'm just going to do a screening method because I really just want to look at the relative differences between um, between the the, uh, the different inputs and outputs. So let's do an update here. It's going to grab 3,000 points off of my response surface and give us some estimate of how the um, heat transfer coefficient change heat transfer coefficient changes as a function of inlet velocity or heat sink. So we can 
look at the trade-off plot here. Um, you can see that inlet velocity is on the y-axis and heat transfer coefficient is on the x-axis. So if I have around one meter per second inlet velocity, I have a, a sp certain spread of anywhere between uh, maybe 18 to 27 for the heat transfer coefficient. And as I increase the velocity, it pretty much increases linearly. So this means that given a particular flow velocity, I can determine what the uh, heat transfer coefficient is. We can also take a look at the sensitivity. So the sensitivity of the part is dependent on the flow velocity as well as the, the gap, uh, the air gap, or the distance in between the heat sink. The temperature itself doesn't seem to impact it to, um, to any significant extent. So this is nice because we can ignore temperature dependent uh, heat transfer coefficient, but we can specify if we know what the gap is for our heat sink and what the, um, what the flow speed, flow rate is across the fins, I can calculate what a heat transfer coefficient. So if I go back to my response surface, I can plot these as, um, uh, as 2D curves. So this is inlet velocity versus average heat flux, and I can adjust the gap. So this is at three millimeters. Let's see if we go down to one millimeter, or 1.5, let's go all the way down to one. We get a particular curve, and as we go up to 10, our heat transfer coefficient drops. So when you have very big gaps, the heat transfer coefficient tend to drop. When you have very small gaps, they tend to rise, but obviously you're using more material at this point. We can export this data as a FMU, functional mockup unit. You can then use a variety of tools to pull data from this for um, design purposes and such. So this is a quick analysis of our heatsink. You can see that we did a periodic sector or symmetric sector for the heatsink. We modeled just a single component. We're able to use uh, the, the ANSYS discovery aim to calculate the heat transfer coefficient using a user-defined expression. Uh, from this expression, we're able to uh, do then a parametric analysis to look at the impact of both uh, flow velocity as well as the size of the heatsink and the temperature of the heatsink to understand what the trade-offs are. And we determined from that data that the main trade-off is the main impact on my heat transfer coefficient is how dense the fin is as well as the inlet velocity. With this data, I can now do larger convection conduction-based thermal analysis without doing the full CFD analysis. And that obviously allows me to speed up my simulation a great deal. So that's it for this presentation. If you like it, please like our video. Uh, if you have more questions, contact us at singularityeng.com and uh, have a great day. Mm -hmm.